What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets Radio. Uh, we broadcast live every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's T-R-A-U-C-H-21. Instagram, T-R-A-U-C-H-2121. Um, this video is about just the Jets offseason. The Super Bowl is come and gone, which is uh, cool. The Patriots weren't in it, thank God. But now it's like, what are your expectations for this team as we move forward? And to me, it's like, it, it seems like a lot of people have a lot of faith in Joe Douglas and no faith in all in Adam Gates. And that's completely understandable. Um, you know, Joe Douglas has a lot to prove, which we've talked about endlessly. But if you look at this team as a whole, they have over 20 free agents. So you look at, okay, that's, which is a good thing because you can, you can shuffle a lot of the roster. The problem with that is you got to replace all these guys. So just say each player costs a million bucks. That's $20 million. $2 million, $40 million. So you look at this potential cap of, say, we may have 70 or $80 million in cap space. It can quickly go by replenishing your roster. So now the expectation is for Joe Douglas to now have a blueprint to bring in his type of guys, you know, to bring in guys that Adam Gates can use in his offense and Greg Williams can use in his defense. Have your, have your prototype player you want, hardworking, high energy, high character, all these things. But I, I think if we're being honest, we, we, may, we may have to expect a lot of change here. And we may see a lot of our favorite players go, and which could be good or could be bad. If you trust Joe Douglas and his um, opinions and his resume and his what he brings to the table, it's a good thing. If you think Adam Gase has too much of an influence and it, they're relying more on him, then it could be a problem. But I, I think our expectation should be a lot of change. Um, uh, and like I said, it could be players that we don't want to see go or some that we want to see go. Like, like, for example, Jermaine Johnson, we all want to see go. Brian Winters, a guy like Avery Williamson, a fan favorite coming off an injury, makes a lot of money. You can save a lot of money by releasing him. While it's not ideal, you can you can bring in, you, you can replace him with a James Burgess or a Neville Hewitt or maybe Blake Cashman gets better. You know, in terms of the corners, I mean, you look at, you want to bring back Brian Poole, it makes a lot of sense. But do you consider trying to move on from a Henry Anderson who didn't have a good year but and take a cap hit? Um, you know, do you move on from a Jordan Jenkins who can command a lot of money but it's getting better every year? This really comes down to what Joe Douglas wants and what he sees to be the new age of football. Do we have to get faster? Do we have to get, you know, bigger? You know, what's what's a prototype offensive lineman for Joe Douglas and what does it match? Like everybody thinks Alex Lewis is one of his guys. Is he gonna be a building block for this offensive line? Can Kelvin Beecham come around? So to me, the expectation for this season is change, and I'm not necessarily sure if it's good or bad. Like, I don't have blind faith in Joe Douglas. I, I've, you know, when they hired Mike McCagney, everybody told me how great he was, and look where that went. Clearly, Joe Douglas has a much better resume, and he surrounded himself with guys like Savage and Alexander and Hogan and all these guys, which are much, much better. So the front office has been overhauled. But to me, it's like at this point, being a longtime Jets fan, it's like I, I need to see results now. You want to see you know, the results on the field. Like, every year this time of year, no matter what move the Jets make, we all drink the Kool-Aid, we all justify it. We we justified every move. I mean, I justified the signing of Tremaine Johnson, a press corner in his defense, and we, we, we justified them all. I mean, because we, we all want to buy in and believe. No matter what move the makes, what move the team makes, we all believe, oh, great move, great move, this is great. Case in point, Ryan Khalil. When the Jets signed Ryan Khalil, we gave, we gave Joe Douglas all the kudos in the world. What a great move. It dressed a huge hole. Needless to say, it was a disaster. So now it's going to be like, all right, how do we, you know, uh, you go into it optimi optimistic, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I expect a lot of changes, but I'm not, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I mean, this offseason, like we say every year, is a huge offseason. But with this coaching staff and, and this new regime, you know, if you blow this offseason, you're going to set you back two more years. Like you look at all the mistakes Mike McCagney made over the last two, three years, Look how far it's setting us back. And now we're, we're overhauling again. So the, the mistakes you make this year trickle down for the next two years, like special contracts. The Tremaine Johnson one's a good example. You know, the C.J. Mosley contract, we love the player. Inside linebacker, one of the highest, play, highest paid players in football. Le'Veon Bell contract, good player. Look at, you know, so everything you, every decision you make now is going to trickle down for the next two or three years. And Joe Douglas has to, I mean, he, he just has to get some really good value overhaul this talent to help make this team competitive this season. But uh, it's not going to be easy. And uh, I'm just, like I said, cautiously optimistic. Um, I think the first move, obviously, be Jamal Adams giving him a mega deal. Um, the one thing I don't like that the Jets do, and I said it last year as well, is the social media team, they actively promote free agents, pending free agents like Robbie Anderson, Jordan Jenkins, all these guys, they're marketing them on their social media. 
So as a fan, you're like, oh, cool. You must be wanting to bring him back. And then if Robbie goes, then what? I mean, this is similar to when like, Demario Davis left. They're like, oh, Demario Davis, great player, great player. Boom, boom, boom. Goes to the Saints. Or um, Austin Safarian Jenkins, which everybody loved him at one point. You know, like marketing guys as you go into free agency is such a weird thing to do. But um, I, I think Jamal Adams is obviously the first one, especially when they're making him the face, face of the franchise. To hype him up, hype him up, hype him up, and not give him a contract will bring us into another Revis-like saga with the contract. So I think they get that done. After that, it comes down to Robbie Anderson. And the team is saying all the right things. They want him back. They want him back. If you want him back, you have to show him the money. If you don't show him the money, don't talk about it. So it'll be interesting. Like I said, we're, uh, we're live every Tuesday. We'll talk about all this. And uh, that's it. T-R-A-U-C-H on Twitter. And talk to you later.